Hi, it's Evan. Hey, it's Amelia. And get this, HBO Girls Rewatch Podcast is presenting a live, live comedy, comedy show, show on May 22nd at 7 p.m. in the East Village at the Knitting Factory's Baker Falls Fever Dream Lounge. Now you've heard everything. <laughs> we have such amazing guests for you, such as Liza Traeger, Cindy Washington, James Wen, and Esther Fallick. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be a night for the girls. I can't wait to see you May 22nd, Wednesday. Get your tickets now. Link is in our Instagram bio, or you can search us up on Eventbrite. Go find them, girls. Love you. Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to HBO, HBO Girls Rewatch. Rewatch. I'm Amelia Rattaller. And I'm Evan. And baby, we made it to <laughs> season six. Oh my God, we flew on through. I don't remember watching this premiere, but remember the recap last week, how I was like Shailene Woodley's vagina? <laughs> watching this right episode, I was like, oh, I'm remembering that quote from five years ago when I saw it. <laughs> That's how much Lena Dunham writing has stuck with me. Have yeah, you, I mean, Shailene Woodley facts will stick with any of its owners. Also, I've thought this. Shailene Woodley is like a huge part of my story because I love the movie The Descendants starring George Clooney and so does my dad. And that's one of the only things we have in common. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a good story about Shailene Woodley. All I know is one girl who went to UT Austin one time was in a pharmacy and she was reading The Great Gatsby at the time. And a girl walks in with a Great Gatsby totes bag and she goes, oh, I love your tote bag. Then the pharmacy woman goes, Shane Lee, and she looks up at Shane Lee Woodley at the Walgreens. Shane Lee is not at the <laughs> UT Austin yeah. Walgreens. It I'm- was it was in Manhattan, but she did go to UT. Oh. Do you think it's like um when she was still like not using deodorant? Do you remember that whole thing? Well, I mean, she's at Walgreens, she could pick it up. I know. I'm like, <laughs> girl, get some secret because you're on the Ellen show and getting doxxed. <laughs> I, I actually just found out I've not been using the word docs correctly for many months. Well, I think words should take on the meaning that their owner uses them as. I think language, it's like they made that up. Literally. We never <laughs> would have had a tail. We never. Um, what's a fan for Taylor's again? Swifties. Swifties. Swifties is now in the dictionary. We made up that word. Yeah. We have like, to create up our remember, own definitions. Remember when Shakespeare invented like so many words and we're mm. like, yeah, I guess we have to add them to the dictionary. Literally. Now. And I'm like, he just made those up. I mean, Badusi, that should be added. Badusi, but dick and pussy. <laughs> um, uh, we're so excited to make it to season six. How are you guys feeling at home? Pause for response. Did you have a good Cinco de Mayo? Um, I'd say no. It was one of the worst days of my life. Thank you for asking. I did see a mouse under my desk and it did lead me to sob in a new way. I usually <laughs> sob just on Thursdays, but this week I chose to sob on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. But I skipped Friday, so that's positive. Friday was a day for partying, aka watching Gilmore Girls. I finally read, wrote my recap. And oh, right. So I wrote the recap and I just spent the whole time like, crying at all these episodes like throughout six seasons like there's one episode actually i can't get into it but (laughs) no please (laughs) it's just the one episode where lorelei graduates business school and her parents come and like there's like all this chaos and they're like being bitchy and lorelei's embarrassed and then you see her walk the stage and like see her parents beaming at her i know it's so sad she moves her tassel and her parents are so proud of her i know i know but i i will say i'm like i want to reach out to emily just so i can like figure out what camera crew she used so i can use it for my next comedy event no totally yeah i, I need three people and i need someone with a boom mic and i feel like for some reason that was before cameras were invented yeah that would be a real today yeah <laughs> um but i'm so excited to dive into season six i didn't remember that it's like episode one is beach hannah like it's beach hannah it's all happening chelsea peretti's here they love to go to the almost hamptons and slash hamptons in the show i know but i guess that's I mean, I could say a lot, but I'm not. I'm barely going to Hamptons too. I feel like girls makes it seem like I'll always be leaving yeah, the city exactly. to go to the beach, uh-huh. and it's like we did just go to Miami. So in a way, well, Sex in the City as well, though. I know it's like well, maybe we're just like not old enough yet. No, but there are age. But there are age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's to hope it. It's just like my job isn't cool. Yeah, like but they theirs don't, isn't either. They don't even give me lunch. Well, it's watching a video about how like. Um, it's so much worse for 20-somethings now than it was before. 
And like, it's like, thank you for saying that, whoever <laughs> said that, because I agree. <clears throat> It is. It's worse. We make less money because everyone got a college degree. It's like almost valueless now. Yeah. Because no one wants to be a mechanic slash like, um, who's someone who takes notes at as, as a judge? Judge oh, clerk? A clerk? No, no. It's, it's a scribe. A scribe. And it's even a more professional word than well, the other ones we've used. Judge clerk let's was employ one of <laughs> we, need, we need all the listeners of the pod to become scribes and mechanics. Literally. We could change our economic status forever. We just had... um. Uh, the guy who killed the ants come to our house. Yeah, and he had the most chill job ever because he just got the to listen to his AirPods. The, the guys who kills the ants. He was so chill. The exterminator. All he had to do is wear AirPods and like spray poison three times, and then like, get paid a hundred k a year for that. And why is there a mouse in my room though? <laughs> I'm so excited for our guest today. Let's do a whole speech with them on the couch. That'll be fun. At them. Yeah, at them. You want to cross dissolve now? Ooh. Oh my god. We are so excited to introduce you to the one and only George, George Saris. The... Oh my Did god. I, say it right? <laughs> <laughs> I love the running start and then both of you being like, I'm <laughs> Sar- Sar- service. Service Severus. 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 Although it is a made up name, so it's you can sort of pronounce it however. It's made up. Yeah, my my real last name is like long in Greek, and I had to when I started doing stand up, I was like, there's just no way. Oh, oh Amelia, take note. I Are know. You Greek? I, no. No, but I'm deciding whether to change my last name from Ritaller to something cuter. Ritaller? Uh, sorry, I'm saying that as though I didn't know. I know that that's your last <laughs> yeah. name, but I'm just trying to figure out what about it you don't like. I feel like Amelia Ritaller has a nice sort of. M- Maybe. It, it keeps growing on me just okay. because as the years go by. But What would you change it to? Well, I don't know. Originally, I was so like Amelia Rose because Rose is my real name, but it sounds yeah. a little bit too dancer. Oh, Rose, and it's also And dancer. it's a little porn. Yeah. yeah. But we're so excited to have you on the pod. I feel like we've gotten every gay host we could think of. And well, we're like, wait, we and forgot. thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. I'm like, wait, but we forgot George. <laughs> I... So since we're now together and I no longer feel angry about not being asked to do the podcast, I will tell you that I have been like, wait, what did I, you know, what did I do to become the (laughs) one gay host that has not done the girl? And each week I see more and more of my friends do it. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I actually was like, when you asked me to do it, I like sent you some old tweet of mine or or something. I I was like the biggest girls. I was like a very (laughs) public girls fans when it was girls fan when it was not cool to be one. Oh my god and i was like You're i like it's i feel like personal. i've been vindicated <laughs> yeah. yeah and i'm like i'm like oh they don't know their history they don't know that in 2015 i was defending girls when people were saying that it's whatever i know well, we I, say we, best for last yes we exactly. say best for last we wanted to spread out we knew we'd have to bring it in season six exactly yeah. and i'm really ha- and i'm like i got in just in time because it's literally final season premiere we both love your podcast oh I, thank you i listened to Stradio lab when i lived in la like 2020 and worked I lived in Las Vilas and I worked in like the Hollywood Hills and every morning on my way to work, I'd listen to Stradio Lab while going through like 30 stoplights <laughs> just down Hollywood Boulevard for 45 minutes. So whenever I hear your voice, I just oh. feel 21 and in wow. Hollywood Boulevard. That's what you come up. That's what comes up for me when I think of you. <laughs> wow. I mean, that that's is beautiful. exactly our target audience. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> we did once, there was a very early episode, I think with our friend Celeste, where we were like, what do we imagine this average Radio Lab listener is like? Mm. And then we like made a whole story about it's like this person who's making an Allison Roman stew because at the time <laughs> the stew was very big, and like is she they non-binary <laughs> and their name is Emma, but they go by mix like M X mm. like the gender neutral um, mix Emma. So the name, <laughs> so our average listener was mix Emma. Oh my god. So I, you were mix Emma I'm at twenty one. Mix Emma. At twenty one, driving through Sunset Boulevard. Literally, I exist. For Wait, real. I'm so don't don't. Isn't every gauge of every podcast is trying to get as many white women as possible? Sorry, every podcast like end goal is to get as many white women as possible. Well, I actually don't. That's think the only that, way for success. I do think that's the only way for success. It had. It had not occurred to us that that was the only way for success until we sort of started realizing that right. maybe white women are the target audience for gay guy podcasts. It is a sort of beautiful reversal of the traditional trope of gay guys standing white women. Mm. Like we're flipping it on its we're head. We're really flipping on its head by you know it's all these like very smart and cool women who have you know high power jobs. 
but want to listen to two gay guys gab. Listen, when you're a girl who works at a marketing agency, exactly. you need it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really think it's very, I don't know. It's very interesting to me that that reversal that has happened. But yes, we are very grateful for all the white women that listen. <laughs> I feel like there are a few. You guys have a big gay audience, I'd say that. There are gay guys. There are definitely, there's a lot of like queers that work in nonprofits and academia that are like very smart. You're so Love. right. So many UC and Berkeley really grads. Poly- yes. And like. Which is great because you feel like you have a smart audience, but also then when we're being dumb, they don't hesitate to call us out. (laughs) Or if we say something that's like a little not wet, well thought out. And then there are, of course, the women that are extremely supportive. Shout out. Whoa, and you're getting a lot of NYU listeners from this Am pod. I? This is almost oh, exclusively okay. listening to NYU Did you guys NYU go to students. NYU? No. no. No, but in a way. In a way. Well, I do think going to NYU is an identity. It's a spiritual truth mm. that you can adopt if you want. Yeah, we think we've earned it now. We're, I hope. We're Shoshana's. Once a week, someone asked me to go see their play that an NYU student who's in their second year of college is wow. producing. So I'm like, we're there. We're going to student events. Yeah. I always romanticized NYU so much. I had very like academically focused yeah. parents and they were both, um, I mean, they literally met while studying engineering they, and they did not, like the idea of applying to NYU was not in the cards for me. They were like, that's mm. for, mm. you know, Silly. people whose parents are therapists and allow them <laughs> to study English literature. <laughs> um, but I always was so jealous of people. Like the idea of going to Tisch was so gorgeous. It's to me. so powerful to me still. But then it's also like, well, now I meet somebody from NYU every day in comedy. And I'm like, it sounds actually like hell and like you're broken forever. Well, and also, <laughs> well, never mind. I, there's nothing I can say that then w- people I know won't be like, is that about me? But <laughs> all I'm all if I can say in the broadest possible term, Terms, I think it's probably a better idea if you want to be a comedian or a writer of any kind to have different experiences Totally. than being an NYU undergrad. That's what they so say, but I'm like, I've yet to see that play in practice. Yeah. Th- I mean... No, I know. We can't know. get into it. We can't get into it. George, was- <laughs> okay, 2015, <laughs> yes. you're tweeting about girls. Mm. Were you there from series premiere? 100%. Give us the story. So I, I was a really early fan of Lena Dunham's. I used to be really sort of in high school and college sort of obsessed with like keeping up with independent film. And I would like be like, what's playing at Sundance and what's playing at, you know, TIFF this year or whatever. So I remember when Tiny Furniture was premiering, I believe at Sundance or maybe it was TIFF. I can't remember what festival, but I remember like learning about it and watching the trailer and being like, wow, that sounds really fresh or whatever. And Mm. then there was someone I went to college with who now I actually think is a very successful TV writer who went to high school with Lena Dunham and she had set up a screening of Tiny Furniture when we were in college. So then I saw it there and then I was very excited. And then I like was reading literally in the trades <laughs> about like, wow, girl, it's like <laughs> Lena Dunham and Judd Apatow. And oh, who's Jenny Conroy? I've never heard of her, blah, blah, blah. And then when it premiered, I was like, the, I think I watched it like in the, you know, l- lounge or whatever of my dorm, like oh my episode gosh. one, season one. Um, and I was sort of hooked from the beginning, I have to say. You and were I, Lena Head from the start, I was unlike Lena the Head rest the of start. America. And I also, I've always, I mean, I think this is a case for a lot of people around my age who have lived in New York. We're all like one degree away from mm. Lena Dunham. I mean, I know so many people that went to high school with her. I know so many people that went to college with her. My friend Jenna produced her podcast. Like my other friend, like used to be friends with her and then they had a falling out. Like it, it is, she's just so in the yeah. ether. So I've always felt a sort of, even in defending her and in sort of like, I've always been like, if she is criticized, that means I'm being criticized. Right. right. <laughs> There's always a chance you could see her at a birthday party. I mean, let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I am sort of shocked that it hasn't happened. You haven't seen her at a yeah. birthday well, party? She's in New York right now. And one mm-hmm. person in our like sphere every day will text us to be like, I saw her on the street. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay. at this point, I mean. She, it's literally like we know so many people that have worked with her that have yeah. wrote on that show and whatever. Um, but I am very happy she's back to making TV. And I will say I've, I watched both of the movies that she directed last year and I like both of them. Okay, cool. So, wow. Yeah. You really are Lena High. I really am Everybody Lena you've had recently hated Sharp Stick, but like the other one. Well, the other one is a better movie. I, the other one is a true, like it makes you want to like have a daughter and Aww. take her to the movies because it's for... An Amazon Prime exclusive. And, yes. But <laughs> I did, in fact, see it with my younger sister in theaters. Wow. Um, and Sharpstick is just a little more sort of, it's more classic Lena in that it's like messier and she's taking some risks and there's some like weird sex stuff. And yeah. I don't know. I thought it was great. 
I liked it. I saw it at Quad Cinema alone once. I did too. Okay, perfect. Our life is perfect. (laughs) Um, Let's jump into the episode. We are going to do a minute to win it recap. This is season six, episode one, All I've Ever Wanted. And away we go. There's a newspaper out and Lena's on the front page. Well, whatever front page can mean. Um, And all her family is having different reactions. Her friends are happy. Some are sad. Her mom is touching her earring. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Marnie and Ray are waking up in the same bed. But wait, are they living together? Or does this Ray just think that? Because Marnie's saying, it's time to move out for a little. I need some space. I'm going through a divorce. And so Ray is like, Marnie, please let me live at Shoshana's. And Marnie's like, no, that's crazy. That's your ex-girlfriend. Go live at Adam's where you belong. So then Ray is like, fine, I'll go visit Adam's. Adam and Jessa are naked on the couch eating yogurt. They've moved Ray's stuff into a corner for sex reasons. And Ray is like, this is inhabitable. <laughs> and then, of course, like Hannah's whole plot line is that she meets Chelsea Peretti from Slag Mag. Oh, and then Chelsea tells her, you have the perfect look because you're such a big flop that we're going to send you to a surfing camp for rich housewives in Montauk so that you can write about how much it sucks. And then Hannah goes there. And in fact, it sucks for her even more than she expected to suck. So in classic Hannah fashion, she basically gives up on the thing that she's wanted for years immediately upon arrival, then starts hooking up with Riz Ahmed, who is a surfing instructor. They have this amazing weekend together. And then at the end she's like what if i move to montauk because i have no <laughs> interiority and sense of self and then he is like oh great idea my girlfriend's visiting next week and she's like wait you have a girlfriend and he's like yeah and then she's really upset about it and also um i guess shoshana's whole thing is just that she seems like in a pretty good place and she and ray are gelling together and she makes them coffee and then marnie brings different coffee and then there's a whole drama there and marnie does eat f Yes. Yeah. Damn. And that's one minute. Well, they kiss and then. Oh, that's right. They do have. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. They get close. I really wish they would stop. I really don't like that. But divorce is messy. Divorce. Desi. Evan Mossbacher is such a great actor, and the. I mean, in some ways, as much as I love all the women characters and girls, in some ways the men characters are almost more viscerally real, just Mm. because they are my heart rate like goes up when Desi or when Adam are on screen because I'm like, I cannot believe their behavior. This is happening. Yeah. Happening. They, That's, yeah, they are really, they really create an emotion, but they're not so in like in depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, well, but they get I think there. that sort of reflects on the depth of many straight men. Of right. And exactly. Age group. I think it's really hard to be a guy and I can just tell <laughs> that they are going through hell and back every day. <laughs> um, wait, before we jump too much into the episode, we have a really important question yes. to ask you. Girl, girl what, what girl, girl are, are you? you? The one I'm not like and I can rule out is Jessa. Mm. I, you know, I wish I was that free and spiritual and artistic and sort of fake British, but unfortunately I'm not. I feel like at my darkest, I am a, um, a Marnie because it's sort of like you wrote that thing a couple of months ago that was like, sometimes I send an email that's so good. I don't think I deserve a career in the arts. (laughs) And I do feel like my curse is that I actually do think deep down I'm meant to be an office worker and it is a struggle every day to pretend that I am meant to be a creative of any sort. Well. And I do sort of think that's what Marnie is. Like, Marnie should just work at McKinsey mm. or at some sort of, like, big multinational corporation of some sort. Or she should be in HR. Or she yeah. should be, like, she should be, like, booking TEDx but not herself giving one. Right. right. Like she is like the girl in the blazer who's like, we thought we would we could get Roxanne Gay for this one. She'll be so fun. Totally. And um and I do think at my darkest that that's what was in the cards for me. Um well, we have to remember yeah. the person Marnie is based off of did invent the wing. Of course. So. Of course. Well, I'm like also so many your so many McKenzie employees also like want to be artists so bad yes, and like exactly. they're like I'll be a DJ for a week or my former Mackenzie employee roommate um she um Michaela <laughs> shout her out please <laughs> <laughs> all I mark up it's like yeah they always are like touching art but they never get so close that they have to do something that doesn't really inherently have meaning well it, there is just something so amazing 
about being like, I'm interested in film, so I'm going to become a data you know, analyst. an exec at no, but just like, oh, oh, oh. like to be like, oh, that's my interest. I have the self knowledge and the you know uh, sort of uh, self awareness to be like, well, I I'm not meant to be a filmmaker, but I want to sort of be in that world. So I'm going to be either an exec or I'm going to be like a programmer at a film festival or I'm going to be an academic who studies film. Um, and unfortunately, Marnie, I think Shoshana has that instinct. Mm. I think Shoshana yeah. is actually very mature. And I think, of course, in the beginning when we meet her, she's still a student, so she's a child. But then, like, as soon as she sort of gets what's happening around her, she is like, okay, I'm going to grow up. Like, I'm not meant to be a crazy art artist writer type. Right. Um, and so I think there is a sort of, like, spectrum there. I think both Marnie and Shoshana struggle with navigating feeling like they are an original, creative, unique person yeah. and also not having really the talent for that. And I think Marnie is more delusional than Shoshana, unfortunately. Definitely. And we definitely see it play out. I mean, even in this episode, Marnie being like, I am I mediocre? Like, am I even that mm, good? Like, yeah. should we give it up? It's definitely the kind of thing where it's like, if this was more than six seasons, if this was 10 seasons, I'm yeah. sure we would see Marnie pivot into the Mackenzie lifestyle and sure. get really into solid core. Well, I'm like, but Marnie, yeah. the thing is, as soon as Marnie always does doubt herself, but then as soon as someone says that gives her the tiniest compliment, she's like, oh, you're right. I'm a genius. <laughs> like she, she is just like, she's actually a very volatile person. And she, as soon as things look like they're reaching some form of stability, she immediately self-sabotages. Mm. She's her own agent of chaos. I do love that it's like as soon as she's like about to have a realization yeah. or have time to like listen to her intuition, she's immediately like, okay, here, I'll fuck this guy. It's yeah. like, no. <laughs> well, I would argue that Shoshana is kind of the opposite of Marty in that way because mm -hmm. she's found art through a career. Like through corporate America, she's found her own way of art. Like the art of sending an email, the art of like producing a brand the art campaign. of being in japan the art of being in japan truly the art of um they're like any job can be creative shop. Yeah. yeah exactly she has that rare there's this sort of like perfect level of intelligence where you are smart enough to be good at something you do but not so smart that you are this ball of anxiety and you're mm. second guessing everything and you are unable to form a concrete declarative statement yeah. and i think shoshana is she is that girl she's like blazer girl she might go to business school she She's not going to be president, but she is going to be like head of people operations. Right. Which is head president. Yeah. In many ways. In many ways. That's girl, what girl are you this week? Oh, I'm so a Hannah. There's no way around it for me. I'm like, first off, my sunscreen did explode in my suitcase and I'm putting my body off my tankini. I was like, if you aren't bringing that yeah, up, I will. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I do it every single time I travel, I lose one piece of moisturizer I brought with of me. Of course. An explosion in my bag. Faking an injury, I went to running camp and I, of course, faked an injury on the first day. I was kind of just there for vibes. I would do that again. <laughs> I at definitely surf camp. faked an injury yeah. pretty much every time we had PE in high school. <laughs> like, I, when we would run the mile, I would run one way around, then hide behind this like shed, smoke a cigarette, and then join back up when everyone was like on their third. <laughs> <laughs> on oh, their third roundabout smoke a cigarette well you made your own injury <laughs> that's so fun um and then the way she eats a sandwich on the beach it's like i once time was attacked by a seagull on the beach so i always will yeah. hunch my back kind of guarding that totally. sandwich <laughs> i i relate to that i think the only reason i would not be a hand in this episode is because i love the beach and i can't relate to you I, love beach i love oh, i grew crazy. up oh, going well, to the beach Greece. like it was yeah it was just like it's heaven to me is just reading a book at the beach and sort of like going in once and then being like it's cold and just like enjoying <laughs> we just went to miami and it's like i am not natural at the beach like I, where are you from texas yeah. and it's just like i've spent so many summers like being a lifeguard or like being on swim team that now i'm just like that's that i put that in the past like don't bring this up totally I think I would be a Hannah if the trip was like a ski trip like if if yeah. I was forced to go cover a ski weekend as a journalist, I would have the worst attitude about it. I would be so insecure. I, I would be like Chelsea hiding in my room. I wish Chelsea would have sent her to Denver. That yeah. could have been really magical. <laughs> I mean, I would love to see her in a full ski look. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That really is an amazing thought experiment. Yeah. Huh. I'm going to have about 30 minutes of thoughts about that today. 
What else? Oh, girl, what girl are you? Girl, what girl am I? Thank you so much for asking. I'm also Hannah, but in a much worse way. Just the New York cynicism. I'm such a cynic. And she is like determined to be in a bad mood and not enjoy things. That's so me. It's like. Sounds like that was you in Miami. Yeah. It's like to have a good time would be to like let go of who I am. Sure, sure, sure. So. Would you be impressed by a guy rapping? Um, No. Yeah, that's your big difference, I'd say. Yeah, but yeah, I, but if the guy was Riz Ahmed, I think you'd be okay with it. I think I'd be fine with it, and also I would love to get drunk on blue beverage. That's a huge part of my story. <laughs> so I have that. I would definitely like spill on myself and be like, "Dancing has just begun." Yeah, dancing has yeah. just begun. You're getting on the floor. Yeah, that one shot of her just fully spilling a drink, not even anywhere near her mouth, just on her shirt. It's so... It's incredible. I mean, it is is nice that we're in season six and she just can't escape who she is at her core. Mm. Like, she's going to go to this. She's going to finally get this assignment for Slag Mag and she's going to go there and make a complete fool out of herself. Slag Mag is crazy because I used to work for this company called Shag Mag. Okay. And it's like... (laughs) Why is my life so similar to Miss Hannah Horvath? <laughs> um, but Slag Mag sounds cooler. Shag Mag was run by Jake Paul's girlfriend and was like Playboy but girl run. Wow. Honestly, Slay. Um, <laughs> huh. Hell. Okay, where should we dive in first? I think let's just start with the meat. Let's go with Hannah. Let's go with Hannah. So modern love that's pretty huge congrats well, girl well ever i did write down that ever there is a montage of everyone reading it in print not a single person is looking at their phone or a computer screen everyone not only is reading it in print but there's not even a scene of someone going to a bodega and trying to find a newspaper all of them are subscribers print right. subscribers to the new york times including like Shoshana and Adam. <laughs> I know Shoshana and Adam. I was like, well, okay. They, they established Shoshana as a reader in this episode, which they hadn't done before this. Which I actually sort of love. But yeah. and I think that is the I actually think, and I'm sure you guys will get into this later this season, but I think in terms of their storyline sort of wrapping up, I actually think Shoshana's is maybe the most full and cohesive. Yeah, of course. Like this yeah, really yeah. is Shoshana's journey. Like she had a sort of rough early twenties and now she's becoming a grown-up it's so interesting that she's like the one with that plot line when mm. she, th- when we originally wrote it i mean the pilot she's only in the one scene like she was originally a side character so for her to end up being the only character that grows is camp well we also get to see her in college and you always are your worst in college yes, that's no, true. Exactly. so like she's gonna have growth because it's like you can't say all that bad forever yeah she is not a virgin anymore she's not a virgin she's anymore different. she's different <laughs> she's and she has really strong opinions about paul krugman's stale writing in the times which i'm just like she wouldn't she'd be watching the morning toast like i am wondering well so when did this come out 20 this 16 16 16 yeah huh Trump. It feels so Trump, modern. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 I know. Well, that's the that's basically why I was asking. I was like, so this would be literally in the lead up to the 2016 election. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure they probably filmed it prior. Like, yes, 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 of course. Hillary was running. Hillary was running. I do think Shoshana was very I'm with her. Of course. She was not a Bernie uh, supporter. And I think that I think for many people the 2016 election was their like political awakening, and it mm. sounds like maybe that would be the case for Shoshana. And I bet you that after the election, Shoshana, at whatever company she was working on for, would like organize an employee group that was more activisty, and she was like, "We Ooh. have to donate to abortion funds, totally. like as a company." That's so true. Was She'd it? be doing it like at the cold brew press. Yes, being exactly. like, "Guys, we gotta do that." I am surprised that she stayed in that one Nolita apartment for six years, so. Yeah, that's so impressive. That is no impressive. One's doing that, I'm especially sure it's for a TV an NYU thing. grad. It's a, of course it's a TV thing, but like, did she find a rent stabilized apartment in Nolita for twelve well, her two thousand one hundred? Found it for her. Her aunt right. found it for her. Only twenty one hundred dollars. Pad. Can you imagine that place? I <laughs> mean, what I've learned, uh, you know, through years of living in New York, is that the only way to have a normal apartment is for some connection, someone who's from New York to have some connection where they're like, oh, mm. my aunt just moved out of this apartment. My cousin is getting rid of this apartment. It's the only... Yeah, you need a death in a family like in order to have a reasonable rent yes, price. Yes, correct. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> and that's the magic in the New York City, baby. Um, but yeah, definitely that opening sequence, I was like immediately like, this is a TV show. 
we're suspending our disbelief. Yes. Um, Tad reading it and being so proud of his daughter did make me cry. <laughs> I mean, I love I love Tad. I mean, Hannah's parents, both of them are just stars. Well, and then Adam kind of having like an emotionless reaction to actually reading a paper and Jessica being like, it's too much for me to read. Like that's it's kind of classic classic. And to kind of get their payback as we see as this kind of goes on. I um, know. But I'm so glad all of last season, Hannah was a substitute teacher dating mm-hmm. Fran. It's like, thank God she's doing like a Chelsea P- Peretti slam mag article <laughs> about Montauk. I feel so much better. I was beginning to feel nauseous. I can't believe the moth turned into something for someone. The moth and modern love are so uniquely corny. And it is so funny that this person whose whole thing was like, I am, you know, I'm too good for everything. I'm not going to work at BuzzFeed, blah, blah. The when she finally reached a certain level of success, it was at the two most cheesy possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's that she had a successful moth monologue and then got published in New York. I in, hope it later turned into a love. podcast episode too. Right. That yes, is exactly. the hope at the end of the day. Right. Like it's like moth, modern love. What's next after that that you would like? She's going on This American Life. On This American yeah. Life. Yeah. Which is cool. That would have been a Nitz Prime. Yeah, I feel her like and Mike Birbiglia. Her and Mike Birbiglia. But before I lost my virginity, I always would listen to Modern Love. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, where? What does that mean for me? <laughs> oh, I know what the next thing first. would be. Which call back a TEDx talk. I think that would be like classic. Like I wanted... her being like how I found my voice. She deserves it after watching Mimi Rose Howard's TEDx talk. Right. Exactly. It's like we need that redemption well, arc. Doesn't Ted kind of predate Moth? Ted, a, yes, certainly. But but I as yeah. a stepping stone, I still feel like a TEDx talk is, is more bigger. Of a goal yeah, yeah, yeah. For See, TEDx well, so you probably get like TEDx Oberlin at Exa- least exactly, bare minimum, exactly, yeah. I hope. <laughs> well, TEDx literally doesn't matter. That's the th- it's sort of like fake. Yeah. yeah. Like anyone can have a TEDx talk. Well, I in college would literally I had the TED app and mm-hmm. I would like fall asleep to them because I was like, oh, like it'll change yeah, my app? brain patterns overnight. By yeah. listening to the, <laughs> like, but it was always just like a 12 minute essay on like why you should look at the sun sometimes. Yes. I think people don't. I think people now that are like maybe slightly younger than you guys don't realize how the grip that Ted had on the world of when it course. came out, it was like, oh, my God, this is going to change everything. We all have access to like a speech by a nuclear physicist. Right, They're and it all, is like, like it's democratizing education. You don't have to go to college anymore. <laughs> and now it's like we act, it has become TikTok is the same way where it's like a twenty two year old girl doing her makeup is giving a TED talk yeah, in real time, but we got, also get to like see like her eyeshadow. It's cool. Well, it, it became too commercial too fast too. It kind of lost yes. so much value. It's like when my local community college started doing TED talks. It's like well then it has nothing. It has no right, sniff. exactly. Well, it's it's sort of unfortunately the double bind of. Um, taking down gatekeepers is like on the one hand it's great that everyone has a chance at uh, fame or a certain right. level of notoriety but on the other hand then a girl doing her makeup is for all intents and purposes as important as a nuclear physicist <laughs> and I'm listening to Kaylee with three E's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think she's cool well like how are they all such motivational speakers though at the end of the day I, yeah I am it's like I'm, I'm so they impressed should make America- a TED for people that are like bad at badass. speaking <laughs> Oh, and yeah, or badass. Like for people that are just like, <laughs> just fuck shit up, man. <laughs> you are a badass. I've read all the versions of that book. Just Have you really? There. Yeah. I see that book at the airport all the time, and I'm always... I mean, it's a huge success. I listen to over 100 self-improvement books. Really? Like, I have a really good scope of like that category of book. I am really allergic to that kind of writing, but then every year there's one where I'm like, I'm gonna try, and I've never been able to get past like chapter two. Like, I really wanted to read slow yes yeah, work slow, oh, slow what is it called? slow thinking f- fast and slow well thinking fast and slow is like at least that's written by like a real sort of like yeah, yeah. laureate but there's one called like slow work i think it's called mm. there, actually, every book there's actually like a, a title big, like yeah. yellow cover and then yeah but i've just never been able to he all his examples in the first chapter were about sports and i was like i'm out no, oh, I'm not gonna actually model my life after someone who like became a junior champion at baseball. <laughs> yeah, it is so hard because so many self help books are so for boy, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, actually, like I never thought I'd be succeeding in business without really trying. Like that was sure. never gonna be my yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. So to talk to me in that tone is a little bit rude. <laughs> yeah. Um, but enough about TEDx. Hannah at the beach with Riz Ahmed. Yes. What do we think about their little love affair? Well 
Well, first off, I think it's first off, it's amazing she's at surf camp to even begin with. Kind of just to look at the scope of Montauk in 2016, to, so much has changed to today. First off, I didn't know they were drinking Montauk beer in 2016. I thought that was only a local phenomenon because now it's really reached Manhattan and Brooklyn. Oh, sure. Like, everyone's no, yeah. drinking Manhattan talk beer. I know. I saw that logo and I was like, I it's thought this really came familiar. out when White Claw came out. Yeah, exactly. You but thought it, it was a new invention, it but it's been around for a while. Yeah. And then also, the essence of Montauk hasn't changed at all. Like, it still really is for this specific kind of one. But now the party scene in Montauk has evolved so much with things like, um, Beach House, if you guys know what this is. Beach Club, Surf Club. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no idea you knew about Montauk. Yeah, I'm from Westchester, so I know about Montauk. It is like a, it is such like a party scene now. So like before, if you look at examples of that new Jennifer Lawrence movie where it's like that specific ideation of Montauk, it is so, so, so different than even from that movie standpoint. Because there's, I bet there's barely even any locals anymore. Yeah. Everyone I know is like sold their surf cabin. Have you seen The Affair? Oh, no. So The Affair is a show that probably came out actually around the time the girls came out um, about an affair between this husband of a very wealthy woman who's like in a rich family in Manhattan that has a place in Montauk and a local woman who's like gasp poor. <laughs> and so it's like the woman who's a local has an affair with this rich guy. And it's sort of about like the aftermath of that. But mm. I feel like that was my... That was where I learned about the essence of Montauk. That, and of course, the Jennifer Lawrence movie. But I do think she is very much the. um, What's it called? uh, The one where she like sleeps with a sixteen-year-old boy. No hard feelings. No hard hard feelings. feelings. One of the best films I've ever seen. Yeah, she's a local. She's a Mont, or at least the is it Montauk or like East Hampton? No, it's Montauk. It's Montauk. She's a Montauk local. Um, uh, okay, I didn't but, realize yeah. that was th- this place. I do the think same the the parties that they're going to are very much like for people that. For locals, like for people that work at this surf camp. She's not going to like the fancy Montauk CMB scene. Well, that was like Stefan Talk House, if you guys are familiar with that. Like that's where they were. It's just like uh, they had those places for dancing Mm -hmm. for the locals. But now it's actually kind of just like for the rich kids now. Got it, got it. All the women on their surfboards are all the exact women on my yoga retreat. Right. And also the way that they're like Chelsea Peretti is like calling out like the white woman who have like ruined yoga. It's like, it's me. It's like, I'm (laughs) a part of the problem. (laughs) This is my community. Like the way the women are behaving on the boards. I'm like, this is me and my family. (laughs) No, it's true. I don't think you, I think it's like, you're the daughter of the witches that ruined. Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, sorry, I got class pass. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's not my fault, but uh, what do you guys think of Riz Ahmed in this episode? Yeah. I mean, I think I remembered him hotter. Oh, interesting. I think he's incredibly hot. I just think he's weirdly miscast. Like, I think he does a very good job with it, but on paper, that should be like a dirty like he's too sophisticated looking like that should be a real that should be the guy from white lotus who works who gets his ass eaten you know what i mean lucas gage like it should be someone with sort of like stringy hair um well the other surf guy seems correct and then it's like who are you i mean riz ahmed just looks like he should be on a red carpet. Like I, I of course don't know. I've never seen anything else he's done. So to me, he's just this character. Interesting. So it like it didn't f- stick out to me too much. Just more of just like he seems, yeah, like he'd be more beachy. Totally. Well, and that's the other thing. He's like, oh, I'm just a small town guy. It's like, well, then why do you have perfect bone structure and like <laughs> a perfect haircut and? Uh, you know, it, but but I do think he makes it work. Yeah. And also it is true that sometimes you'll randomly meet the hottest person you've ever yeah, seen no, at the, a beach bar. Totally. Most of these beach people are actually really hot. Yeah, beach people. <laughs> beach people are hot. Yeah, beach, people are, beach hot. people are hot. That's true. I you have to, And they always have a perfect tan. They kind of have everything working for them. I think these, people who work they in work seasonal out, work, yeah. just they are beautiful. That's just how that works. They get all the ability to because they can tan, they can rest, and so they don't really have skin problems in the same way we do. They work out for their profession. And it's like, yeah, they're not going to have the same problems. Yeah. I guess the arc of Hannah um, writing and not wanting to do it is classic trope. We've seen this every episode of for course. five seasons. But at the end, when she tries to be happy, is that new or is that actually old as well? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, it, of course, reminds me of the famous close-up on Hannah's face when they're in the back of the car with the bike, mm. when they're being driven 
Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? When they're leaving the Croxodon. Exactly. Yeah. And she's like so happy. That she's going to. This is sort of the reverse of that. Like in that one, you can just see her not being able to hide how happy she is. And then in this episode, she can't hide how sort of depressed she is. Like she's trying to smile through it and she can't. Well, I think she's remembering like this isn't forever. She has to go back home and like face her life. Well, it's also like, you know, she went there so resistant to the idea of having a transformative experience, Mm. the idea of liking the beach. She, against all odds, did have this moment of happiness, this magical day, and then it was immediately stripped away from her, which I think... I mean, I would also realize and become deeply sad when a guy plays she's so high at a campfire. Like, that is when you experience the biggest lows (laughs) and the biggest, like, realizations of, like, the truth of who you are, and you just have to sit there while everybody's so chill. (laughs) No, it really is true. And it's also, it goes t- to show you how good the, how specific the writing is, because I do think a lesser show would have made that song, I don't know, Dashboard Confessional or Matchbox 20, like, mm. like a sort of more obvious dude song. But there's something about She's So High that is just so deeply humiliating <laughs> that there's no, there's just no coming back from it. Yeah, but I do think he's such a good singer. It's like, he can get away with a lot. <laughs> yes, it's true. They are really a musical community that the surf camp, he can rap. I wish he could do that at a bonfire too. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, yeah, it's like a very, um, well, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I, um. I do see her, like, you make a very interesting point. It's like, is this new for Hannah to show that, like, she went from uh, this great happiness to mm-hmm. sadness? But, I'm like, Polly does ruin everything at the end of the day. Being open. Oh, him there's being always open. a twist. Introducing the topic of polyamory for the first time in television. Yeah, it probably could be the first. Yeah, and it's like, that is a twist at the end. She gets over it pretty quick, I'd say. She kind of killed that. She turns around in bed mad for 45 seconds, and then she's like, whatever. I'm like, work, girl. But someone was to talk to you the way that Hannah talks to you in this episode, like, are you staying for the hookup? She's so... It comes off so strong. The way Hannah talks to him? Yeah. Wait, what does she say to him at the end? I was just in the whole episode. Like, their oh, first oh, interaction is oh, you mean like immediately act- negative. Oh, yeah. But I think he's so used to you know, rich women and mm. like extremely rude Montauk customers talking to him as though he's like literal trash on the street that I think is sort of immune to it. And I also think he just has this like cowabunga attitude about everything. Yeah. Where he's just sort of like, eh, you know. Go it's like, he's like, all right, let's flow. get her to the nurse. Yeah, it's yeah, so exactly. <laughs> passive. But it is, I always admire Hannah, how much she like makes moves. Like I would never be at a bar being like, uh, you want to stick around and chat like you can put your drinks on the company card like i am not like that and she's always doing that yeah she's sort of she actually does have a reporter's instinct sometimes mm. but she never uses it for journalism yeah which is allegedly the career she wants to pursue i think she's a lot of riz too honestly yes yeah, she has she can turn the riz. riz on even with that sunburn she has riz yeah because this isn't it you're so rizzed up if you can dance at a club like that no it's true and literally be the one writhing on the floor and everyone's like looking at you and being like go hannah go hannah <laughs> there's something so i think this is the third hannah dance scene we get in the series every single one of them is like etched into my brain forever as like the most powerful piece of cinema we have i just like, say we're up to four or five really yeah we should i'll look for i'll try and make create a, a mash a mashup <laughs> mix post on youtube i mean i think the whole concept of like being grateful and like she's manifesting her own happiness being like let's have fun for now or what's the amazing line that she says he does say hate takes energy love yes, gives exactly. vibes love which gives is vibes. again such a great like there is a way to write that line that is so much less interesting. Just him being like, it's all about vibes or something. But hate takes energy. Love gives vibes is so perfectly meaningless. <laughs> and so per- exactly what like a fake deep Montauk Kawabunga guy would say. Yeah. Um, but then Hannah really takes it seriously. And she's like, it is true. I do want to give vibes rather than take energy. It is so true that some of the dumbest advice can actually be some of the most profound things to consider. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's kind of the Shoshana's of the world of we're going back a little. It's like, it's the things that are just like right in front of you are able to accomplish It's TEDx. It's It's TEDx. TEDx. (laughs) It's all TEDx. It's all TEDx. Well, let's jump into the other girls this episode. Marnie and Ray, are you pro them, anti them? Oh, God. I mean, I'm pro Marnie, like sort of figuring her shit out because Mm. I really think... Even more so than Hannah, 
Marnie just, the way she's humiliated constantly, it actually, I'm sure I'm not the first to have made this point, but it really harkens back to Miranda being constantly humiliated on Sex and the City. Like, they take the person that is, that wants to be the most dignified and then just put them through the ringer in this way. <laughs> I, Give so, them Shay Diaz. It's exa- mean. I mean, it's also like with Miranda, like Miranda's the one who had to eat chocolate cake out of a trash can. Miranda's the one who had to like be hit on by a guy in a sandwich costume. Like it is as much as all of them have to do with their share of humiliations. It was always Miranda that had the short end of the stick. And I do think they do that with Marnie and with all the guys that Marnie has to be with. And she sort of can't get a moment of respite, like a moment of triumph in the midst of it all. It always is pulled out from under her. Um, So am I for Marnie and Ray? I mean, it so clearly is doomed. But at the same time, I need her to leave Desi. So I think if that's what it's going to take, then that's what it's going to take. Totally. I, I clocked something, which I, I wonder if you guys clocked this, but she brings the two coffees and one of them says Marnie and one of them says Ray, which implies that she, when ordering them, told them to write Marnie on yeah. one and Ray on the other. Well, it said Marnie and it's like Ray guy. It gave her oh, like okay. two words. Second one crazy. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I wonder if that is just sort of like a thing that props didn't pay too much attention to or right. if it's literally meant to be a character. <laughs> thing that marnie is the type of person who would order for someone else and explicit rather than just being like two for marnie tell them to put two names i'm like she definitely she would put two names let's not pretend that's not her it's weird that she didn't get shoshana one no exactly well they'll be that detail oriented as well and then be like and he you don't know he doesn't want to buy something from starbucks that's exactly it you're right it's such a marnie detail it's so marnie it's so sad to see how much chemistry ray and shoshana have and how much they have to discuss all the time and how much ray and marnie don't they were never like that in their relationship though it's only after the fact i know it's only that now that shoshana is not a child now she's like smart because she lived in japan for six months but i do think they had a connection they just hadn't found a way to explore it correctly when they were in a relationship well since Shosh breaks up with Ray Ray becomes an adult that yes. Shosh can admire and before she couldn't respect him because he wasn't doing anything yeah and but Shoshana n- talks so much slower this season too does she? yeah she or slows she down her speech blonde? patterns both <laughs> Well, those are often related. Yeah, yeah. of course, <laughs> historically speaking. But I also think Shoshana initially wanted Ray to be this like mask, this, wanted him to like save her or be yeah. a daddy figure. And I think she has let go of that. So whether or not he's more of an adult, whether or not he's matured, she just simply doesn't need a daddy anymore. Mm. She actually sees him as her <laughs> equal because she herself has grown. Right. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see Marnie walk into that and be like, so aware of what it all means and then so like i'm gonna ignore all that and move forward it's like girl but i mean of course that's what leads her to like make out with desi so easily Mm -hmm. so it all makes sense she wants quick fixes marnie always Mm. wants just like what is the quickest way we can get someone to give me a compliment to make me feel good and then we can move on like and with ray that did in fact seem like what he was offering at first because she was like oh perfect someone who's like obsessed with me because I'm so hot and so out of his league, that will give me the confidence I need. But the second there was an obstacle in the form of, you know, this uh, potential that she doesn't know him as well as she thought she did, or like the fact that she he has a better connection with Shoshana, whatever, rather than her like taking a second, taking a beat to figure that out, she's like, well, it's easier to just go with Desi. Yeah. Yeah. But also, it is so, there's the coffee thing actually has so many layers to it because yeah. Marnie's classically known to always go to a coffee shop to do her work there so you know she's getting coffee she's bringing coffee back like Mm -hmm. she's definitely gone to a starbucks at some point so for her to learn this lesson now six months into a relationship and also were they making coffee together every day is that the implication here was she never bringing home a pastry after work right 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 i don't know it's just like it doesn't feel accurate but yet here we are here we are season six marty's just figuring out ray's anti-starbucks it's not right. Ray's I was actually right. looking at the. I was looking at the cups. They did obviously look like Starbucks in the beginning because there was green. But then I was like, "Is that the Starbucks logo?" No, I think they couldn't use that for coffee right, reasons. Right, right. Fair. Okay. But I think they want us to think it. Yeah, they want us to think it's Starbucks. It's, corp- yes. it's corporation. Okay. Jessa is stone cold mean yogurt bitch. This episode. I know. I. Jess is another one where I'm like, this is just not cute anymore. Like you have to. 
you gotta grow up. And I think she also ha- clearly has so much self-loathing about it. Like she knows that she's what she's doing is wrong and that it's not going to end well. And yet she is just like, I, she doesn't have the self-control to, to yeah. end it. Why yeah. Why does she act like a frat star this whole episode? Like throwing yogurt on the ground? Well, I think she mirrors her partner. Her partner. And I think like she is, there is something about being with Adam where she's like, oh, for at least while we're together... I can just like let go of anything that is keeping me back and just be this like slot, like naked slob yeah. in the house. It's so, it really, like watching that scene triggered every memory I had in college when I like, I had to go over a frat guy's house to do a group project. Yes. Totally. And the way they interacted in their own home. Like that was the exact visceral feeling I got. I mean, it is the definition of like taking up space. Like yeah. Adam cannot be in a room unless he is setting the terms for the behavior of the people in that mm. room. Like, he can never, you know, he can never mirror someone else. He always has to be the one setting the tone. Yeah. You can smell that apartment through the screen. Yes, it's true. It, it smells like yogurt. Hell. <laughs> so I wanted to address a couple of things. First of all, that Ray is reading A Little Life in bed. So funny. I mean, it's he hasn't so read it before. perfect. Well, that was sort of like when it came out. Oh, then the perfect. I mean, it might have been... Actually, that's a good thing to know. Maybe I should have done my research before coming on, but that could either denote, if that's when it came out, it could denote that he's like on top of yeah. new literature, or there is a chance it came out like a year or two before that, which means, oh, he's late to it. But late in a sort of chic way, because I do think there's something chic about being like, well, yeah, I'm a reader, but it's not like I'm reading, you know, BuzzFeed list of the best books mm. of the year. I'll I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is this amazing line that Marnie had, which is, I want to spend more time with you, but I want some of that time to be apart. <laughs> 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 which is like so, I mean, it's so Marnie, but it's also just so all of them. It's this desperate need that I feel like was sort of pathologized as like very millennial to have it both ways. Yeah. And for everything to to never define everything anything like it is impossible for marnie to just say what she wants so she talks herself into circles all the right. time yeah. and sets herself up for failure but it is just so funny to say i want to spend more time together but i want some of that time to be <laughs> that line could be read by any of those girls and you're yes, like that's exactly. so funny them. exactly but it is like just like millennial women were raised on like women can have it all like that's where we were with feminism so it like makes sense that they are all like that in the same way well i think hannah does a perfect description of this this is like being a self-aware narcissist like she truly called she's like i'm a narcissist but i'm aware of it like that is yeah. truly what all these characters are kind of going through no it's true and the marnie of it all although marnie would never admit to being a narcissist. no she would never admit to being a nar- she's not self-aware she's, kind of she's just so nurse. happy for her friend's article how could she be a narcissist <laughs> i know i there what in again in a classic marnie way her being like hannah's in print yeah like it's like relax it's so mar- you are so clearly like trying to overcompensate right for the it's fact the, that you feel a little jealous it's like the exact way she reacts when hannah gets into iowa where it's yes. like she's just so happy in a way where it's like what and it also it also is very similar to her singing kanye west at the startup party right it's because she <laughs> she's like if i let myself feel the feelings that i'm feeling i will kill myself so i have to immediately overcompensate in the most insane way possible mm. like i yeah. have to throw a party to congratulate someone rather than just like send a text yeah i love her she's so real she's so raw she's she is so she's the raw. most raw no one has ever been as raw no i actually ever. i actually get so sad when she's like the tour was a mess because we didn't sell merch like that actually breaks my oh heart. i know it's so funny i mean the money is a merch we live with a merch designer and we learn this lesson every yeah. day money is merch money i is actually merch. i'm here to tell you money is not in merch Oh really? Wait. It's just as like for musicians though. Oh, for musicians, sure, 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 maybe. But Not for, for but it, it always just seems like I was always like, wait, is merch how everyone makes money? But it's like if you think about the how much it costs to make something, how much you upcharge it, then you have to carry it around if you're on tour. Eh. I mean, it's we've so listened. Expensive. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else is a poog head, but the Jacqueline Novak merch like through line in every episode of Poog, it's like it is not easy. It is one of the hardest tasks, but it is where she's making all her money. That's I mean, I yeah. did talk I, it to is him. true that there's no money in theater and no money in touring stand up unless you are literally Ricky Gervais and so. selling merch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to a merch designer today and it's going to cost like almost more 
than it is to sell the actual t-shirt to buy one. Yeah. Which is cool. I think it's exciting. At least we could have them. Totally. Give it out to 50 of our friends. Do not negative. Um, uh, I also, just one last thing. I loved that one of the Montauk ladies' names was Laramie. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, gr- one of the things girls is so good at is character names. I yeah. mean, obviously M- Mimi Rose, obviously Booth Jonathan, but they're just so good somehow. Tally, that's a Hannah Bluebar. Yeah, like it just th- some somehow they always. It really is one of their great one of their yeah and it's like an improvers background to yes. come up with names that good yeah well i'm like also talking about the surf ladies jenny makes such a big deal about not getting the right wetsuit and then when you go to actual surfing scene she's in a different wetsuit but don't you think she, she was like grossed out like, by... i don't want to wear it but she yeah. packed two wetsuits two. Yeah. then why did she make such a big deal about it why did she because the other one was pink girl. and she was wearing high heels did anyone else catch that she was wearing high heel sandals i want to be jenny when i grow up yeah she was gorgeous that's my dream and oh, she's a lesbian. God. Those women, if you spend, there have been a few times in my life where I've spent time with sort of, you know, those kinds of like Park Avenue mom types, like women who either their goal in life was to marry rich or they were in fact incredibly successful and um, uh, intelligent, yeah. but then gave it up. Well, they met someone at McKinsey. Kids. Yeah. yeah. Like there is... Those women really are, there is just this simmering chaos underneath mm. the calm. And they really do need to go to surf camp in order <laughs> to be able to handle another school year. Yeah, they like, love kickboxing, yes. kickboxing. They love Pilates. If you look on Unbreakable, can be Smith, like the rivalry yes. between all the moms in that show. It's like, it's a perfect example. And They're also in so 30 smart. Rock, where they do a fight, female fight yeah. club. <laughs> it just, there, they, there needs to be some sort of outlet. We it's usually more, drinking. We need mm-hmm. more TV about. The, well, I guess we have every reality. Almost franchise. every show. But also, I think Fleischman is in. Tr- Did you guys watch Fleischman is in trouble? No. I watched the first episode. That's very much about. I mean, you know, it's about like thwarted ambition and and not being able to have it all as a woman. <laughs> it's it's very good. Well, I get so sad when women can't have it all. I know. I'm like, I know. Is that's this why about girls me? are so amazing because they're all having it all. <laughs> they're all getting it all, and by the end, they're all. The series finale is so epic sauce and perfect, and I have no notes at all. <laughs> yeah, they all sort of like dance in a circle and right. chant, "We had it all." Yeah, it's so fun. Okay, lastly, we need to cover um, Elijah. Yes. So we leave off last season with Dill is like, "Oh yeah, I need a boyfriend, but not you because you have no ambition." God. A devastating oh my god i'm so dull when someone doesn't have ambition i literally struggle to respect them on a basic human level and i'm like this is a problem like <laughs> you need to go to therapy for that people are allowed to not be ambitious yeah I, it is so funny to um have elijah come into the situation it's like he's now using a classic gay thing that is sex as an outlet for every anger any emotion you've ever felt like you're gonna have an orgy in your roommate's room with 15 people and yeah. hopefully it gets you an acting role well it's also this thing that again is very girls and very quote unquote millennial of like trying everything but the most obvious right avenue to get something like the last thing he would do is work hard or take a class yeah. the two things that potentially in a traditional narrative would help you get what you want <laughs> he's like well I'll have an orgy I'll try to you know start a romance with a famous newscaster the like, amount of gay men I speak to that are like this is how i'm gonna like make my way in the industry and it's like i think you should just try to do the task like i know well of course i mean as much as i agree with you in theory it's like ultimately that also doesn't work for many people and then in fact you do see like the orgy is the way the orgy sometimes is the way but you have to you i don't know you have to have more chill about you have to have more chill and also unfortunately i think um he is also in a point where he's like sort of aging out of being the hot right. young twink, which is also so tragic to be in that sort of like 30 to 35 age range where you are no longer the young twink, but also not old enough or successful or mm. rich enough to be the daddy. And you're like, oh God, I feel lost. I think you need both talent and nepotism, which is of course. Lena Dunham's whole thing. But nepotism for gay guys is sleeping your way to the middle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then you need to take an acting class. You can actually succeed in the middle. And that's how you get to the top. If you're trying to get the pe- people that could give you professional opportunities into an orgy, they're not going to want to come to a 
Greenpoint apartment where you're living with your friend and have the orgy in her gross bedroom. They're going to want like an eyes wide shut situation. They're going to want like <laughs> yeah. something a little more sophisticated with some, you know, cheese and crackers. No, they don't want to have to walk from the Nassau. Juice. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Um, let's dive into our next segment. Girl, girl get, get your, your Glock. Glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire, fire time. time. Are you a school girl or are you getting schooled, girl? Ooh, I'm a school girl. Are you the voice of your generation or a voice of a generation? A voice of a generation. Would you think Jenny is a brand too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you give zero fucks about anything, but you have a strong opinion about everything on everything? Yes. Are you cool because you can drink a lot and not be an alcoholic? Yeah. Are you more of a dumpling than a woman? Um, yes. <laughs> Who takes a fucking class? Okay, I do actually agree with that. <laughs> and wait, do, should I respond who takes a fucking class? Yes. I think people who are new to a community. Right. And I think that's the sort of tough thing about it is that you take a class with the intention of meeting a community, but then the only people you meet are other people that are also new that are desperate for community. Well, sometimes there's one person that can shine the light. That's true. That's true. And they think a class is good for them and for completely different reasons. But you are right about the community thing. I know. Like and it's hard. I mean, I think we're very spoiled in that we just have a natural, just through comedy, you meet so many people. I would say too many, many of which I wish I could unmeet. <laughs> um, but it is just so easy to have friends and to have acquaintances. And I think none of us realize how rare that is. It's so rare. We're so lucky to meet seven new people every week. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And just sort of like, Follow them on Instagram forever. Yeah, it's awesome. I love stories. <laughs> Have you been hired for your look alone? God, I wish. I don't think so. <laughs> do you bring other people's manic energy into spaces? Yes. Can you swim or do you have fun sense of humor? Ooh, you know... I have both, believe it or not. I'm, yeah. one of the, I'm one of the few people who both has a wicked sense of humor, to quote Sabrina Carpenter. Wait, no, she says twisted sense of humor and i can swim oh Whoa. my god girls can't have it all yeah. it turns out <laughs> uh do you eat yogurt out of the container yes what brand faye Whoa. which is what she was eating in fact it's the same exact one faye two percent two percent the green one okay yeah. so you got a little bit of hannah i love yeah i mean put some pecan like i have pre sort of crushed not crushed but you know cut pecans some honey you have okay, yourself a well, delicious you protein actually, rich breakfast. That's you know so everything Greek. about Greek yogurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's true. That's so cool that you're Alexis Liddell from Sister to the Traveling. I Pants. very much am Alexis Liddell. <laughs> every <laughs> week, every Sunday, I'm like, I'm going to start mediterranean me and diet this week. I mean, I have to tell you, as someone who did eat the Mediterranean diet, I certainly didn't feel like at my healthiest when I when that was the I like when I was in high school, all my food was cooked by my two Greek grandmothers. And it was like, yeah, I'm eating a lot. <laughs> and it's not healthy. <laughs> mm, okay, Mediterranean diet in um You have to be mindful. I be mindful. The Mediterranean yeah. diet actually has nothing to do with actually the Mediterranean region. I mean, I I think the thing is in America everything is so yeah. insanely unhealthy and is basically just like different ways to eat corn syrup that any alternative is good. Totally. So yes, I mean I agree that eating my grandmother's food is of course better than eating with McDonald's every day, but I don't necessarily think it's the one cure. Right. Because the Mediterranean in America is kind of just like an Israeli salad. Sure. And like a side of hummus. Yeah, it's couscous. It's couscous. Left couscous. And right. It's a lot of olive oil. It's a lot of olive oil. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. Okay, well, this brings us to our last segment of the pod. That, that outfit in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That's, that's where we compare Brooklyn, Brooklyn then to Brooklyn, Brooklyn now. now. You were oh, here for fun. it all, yeah? I was not here through it all. I actually, I mean... I lived in San Francisco for most of girl, right. girls was um, was airing. I think it premiered maybe my senior or junior year of college. I can't remember. And then I lived in San Francisco for a while. Then I lived in Boston. And then I came here. And I think... I didn't know you were living in all these major cities. Mm -hmm. I know. Can you believe? I, I've lived in so many major I cities. I need to learn more about your past, girl. Well, we can do an Origins episode okay. later on <laughs> where you have all your guests back to do hard-hitting WTF-style interviews. Perfect. But I think... Maybe I'm wrong, but I think I was probably living in Brooklyn. My, probably my first year in Brooklyn was maybe the girls' finale wow. year. Mm. I mean, I would have to. So you actually fact only check know that. Brooklyn post. -girls. I know Brooklyn literally. The, the the era of this episode is probably when I moved to Brooklyn. Oh 
my oh my gosh. god is there anything that stood out in this episode as like this would never happen in 2024 well i will say that in, tr- in terms of reading in print i understand that even then it was a stretch for everyone to have a print subscription but like i actually did have a sunday you know the times used to do and they probably still do it just a subscription where you only get the sunday times and then which is also nice because you get the magazine and you get t magazine and it's also it's like such a fun thing to have every sunday and i feel like there was a last breath of people reading newspapers Mm. physically and now i mean you literally would just simply never see someone i mean my parents were like that my whole childhood like new york times boots and yeah, they recently um, ended their subscription last year. And I'm mm. like, okay, it's really, it's over. And in fact, I do, I probably pay more for, I actually do subscribe to a lot of things. It just is mostly digital. I think, I think you could still get people reading the New Yorker in print or New right. York Mag in print now. But I think the idea that like cool 28 year olds would have a modern love, would get the times and read modern love on the times is a little i think think in 2016 though no they were they were reading physical paper you were just saying that but i do think we're now coming back into a trend where it's like because it's so performative read out loud it's like we are going to get print paper back i mean here's hoping i mean well i still love reading a magazine and you always need newspaper in the house for something yeah that's yeah let's think about our friends who are in the new york times now it's like oh no we're just like clicking the link in their ig story i like i listen to new york times articles Oh, interesting. I've never been able yeah, to... They've, now they have a separate app for the whole paper and audio. Interesting. And it's like, I wish I could let people know I'm listening. Yeah. There's no way. There's no way to spread the word. There's no way to spread You're the word. You're doing it now. And I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think what else in the episode... I think really the outfits are a big example here. Because Hannah wearing those giant um, octagon sunglasses. Those sunglasses were tough. Those yeah. sunglasses were really tough, but so of the time. Although when she first arrived, I actually made a note. I was like, chic dress. When she first arrived, she was wearing a sort of maxi, like very resort wear dress mm. that I actually thought like look great on her. It was a fun palette. Um, and then it was sort of all downhill from there. <laughs> totally. I did love her braids. Her hair is looking cool. Her she's hair been, is looking cool. She's been essentially bald for two seasons. So it's cool to see her braid. What about her bathing suit? I feel like the- so I've owned a swimsuit uh, like that. Like it's a one piece, but it's a two piece. Yes, yes. That was so of that time. Tar- I feel like Target was really paving the way for swimsuits It was very like of that. that time, yeah. Where it's like, yeah, is this a mono key? It's called a monokini. Yeah, I don't think she would necessarily be wearing that these days. I, I think these days it would be, I mean. It'd be area high-waisted color blocking. Yeah, but it also, or it would be, I think, I think girls missed the rise of Instagram e-commerce. Mm. And I think if now... You know, if Hannah were in her early 20s now, she'd be constantly making terrible purchases on Instagram. She would be like advertise some like right. direct to consumer like Shein knockoff. Yeah. And then buy it and the A print would be like, all off. Weird phrased. Yes. Tees. yes. <laughs> I know. What are people even wearing to the beach anymore? I think she would embrace bikini culture. I, I do wonder this every year. I mean, I guess for gay guys, it just always is speedos. It's always speedos. It's but a tankini summer this year. You think so? Well, I know so. It's it's trending. I think tankinis so. are trending. Tankinis are back this summer specifically. It was my entire TikTok feed for two weeks. Why would you not want your stomach to be tan? Because there's something really chic, and it's also because of the wave of um, skincare. And oh, like I we're see. not getting tan organically from the sun anymore because that would make us look old and we want to look like Reese Witherspoon or Anne Hathaway, right. I guess is the better example. Well, she... Oh, that's a good point. Huh. We're using Jergens Natural Glow moving forward, folks. And then we're using SPF 100. Like the days of like <laughs> 10 SPF tanning oil is long gone. No, literally. I, I, I unfortunately, I, I mean, fortunately for myself, I do have because of my Greek genes. I sort of have to put on sunscreen like twice in the beginning of the summer and then I'm kind of good to go. Okay, your life is perfect. I don't think that's true. Well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Let's check back in in a few decades. <laughs> no, I do put sunscreen on, but I just, I, my boyfriend is very non Mediterranean mm. <laughs> and he really does have to put on like SPF 50 when we go to the beach in a way that I'm not jealous of. Do you think that Marnie would know about Starbucks being problematic now? This is always a question with Marnie. I do think Shoshana, as evidenced by her opinions on Paul Krugman, Shoshana Mm. is now at a point where she is at least attempting to educate herself in some way. And I think 
Jessa, for all her narcissism, also is generally aware of what's going on. There's that amazing line early on where Jessa goes to Hannah, just read one newspaper, Hannah. Just read one newspaper. And it's like, <laughs> she just is like, yeah, she vaguely, I'm not saying Jessa reads every day, but she knows what's happening around the world. Then the big question, and then Hannah sort of knows what's happening because she like, aspires to be a journalist she's and writer on Twitter of Twitter and somebody's yes. tweeting and she's like, I guess I should get Google. That. Exactly. Yeah. So Hannah is like Twitter. Her idea of what's happening is is only through Twitter discourse. And then Marnie, it I do think Marnie unfortunately is the one of them where like civil war could be happening like the Kirsten Dunst movie and she would have no idea. And she would be like <laughs> we have that town. She'd like we yeah. have a gig tomorrow in um Nashville and we need to get going and it's like well no planes are taking off girl because the fascist president has taken over the airport yeah and she'd be like I still just it's not adding up yeah oh poor thing I don't know but she is getting the Sunday paper so we're not giving her enough credit but don't you think she actually went out and bought it Ooh. for Hannah's article a hundred percent and she was only like she's like oh how do I find the modern love section yeah. and then throw away everything else <laughs> she's like I can use this like wrap a gift later yeah it's beautiful I love, I love that it. girl well the thing is a perfect app I know wait George you have any closing thoughts any <laughs> blessings for season six for us you know, I first of all, I'm so proud of you guys for making it to season six. I mean, what an absolute true Brooklyn success story. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, it really did inspire me to do a rewatch. I have to say that the show was so important to me in a very specific time in my life that I have resisted doing a full mm. rewatch. And I am. What is the fear? It really was just such a perfect snapshot of where I was emotionally during that time. And I do look at, I do think back on it so fondly that my fear is that I won't like it as much the second time. Mm. And also, I, you know, that it will have not, parts of it will have aged in a weird way. And I don't even mean politically. I mean, just like things will just seem unrealistic because mm -hmm. the world is different. Um, and I was, I was so. I was just a tiny bit younger than them in a way where I, I it I was so impressionable and it did seem to me like oh this is what it's going to be like in 2 years when I graduate college. Right. Um it was almost like the map of like and it's going to be just like Exactly, the exactly. And and I really was like yeah, it was almost like they were my big sisters or something and oh. they like prepared me for yeah. for early post college life. Well, I always think anyone that's two years older than you has much more wisdom exactly. than anyone else. Yes. Yeah. I, I it really was that exact thing. It was like two, three years older. And I mean at this point we're all old enough that we could be peers age wise. Like I don't think I feel younger than them. But like th there's something jarring about now looking back and having them be significantly younger than mm. me that sort of warps my experience of watching it. Like now I feel yeah. you know like I'm Oh God! Like these girls need help. You're not trying to teach them, exactly. Like yeah. I wish to give you a lesson, please. I know. Thank you so much for being on the of pod course. today. It was so fun. It was such a thank you for studying the a literature true so deeply. I'm so grateful to be here for the final season premiere. Um, I'm like, is there anything else I want to say about girls? It's like I know it's so. Remarks. I feel like you're somebody who has a lot of girls things to say. So I almost am like, well, if there's anything that you feel yeah, like yeah, needs yeah. to be you added, can voice post, note it. Voice yeah. note it I will. I, 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 I will. Vote, I will voice note it. Um, I have heard rumblings of there is going to be. It's been long enough now that there is going to be a new sort of version of girls for the next generation are, are rachel sent yeah. a vehicle well there is, is yes that one? is true there is the there is the rachel well they're vehicle. trying eight yeah. things out and maybe hopefully one of them is like girls oh are we referencing snowflakes what are we talking about there's about this i hear about so many projects where me it's like, too yeah this is a girls for queer people this is a girls for working professionals yeah. but unfortunately i mean what's great about rachel's thing is that rachel is in fact incredibly smart right. and has a point of view because i think what they tried to make happen for so long. I mean, I think people don't remember this period post girls where they tried to make girls like over and over and over again, like a version of girls. It was like master of none. It was insecure. It was looking it, like, and I understand that I'm painting in broad strokes here, but like they tried to do the sort of like kind of mumble core adjacent group of friends narrative. Um, and I think the one that really worked was insecure because, because she had like a real um, 
point of view and the show was built around her but i'm like there were many other ones that sort of flopped yeah they all got two seasons I, like i've tried yeah. so hard to watch every one of those shows mm-hmm. and for some reason i'm like i don't care i would stick with insecure because it really is really good well, and it, i think it's it's very the smart other one is kind of search party but it's just as it went really extreme as well but it's a kind of group of friends it's not like the same it's but so much more meta than yes girls exactly is. i think search party is actively commenting on girls itself and and also <laughs> just like uh, it's actively commenting on like quote unquote millennials stereotypes right, yeah rather than living them living out. yes I, yeah. I think it's a much more cerebral and sort of like uh intellectual show or something it's like removed from like the yes. raw emotion like and it's also very sort of like genre like it really is influenced by different genres and it's mm. also a mur- it's also a mystery i really hate that it's horror too because every time i watch i get so scared about horror stuff and every time oh, i really? watch it i'm like this is so funny and then something scary happens and i'm like stop <laughs> don't lock her up yeah <laughs> don't lock her up um i, start I think that's how we end the pod <laughs> yeah. um wait everybody go see george on may, may 22nd 20- at littlefield they're that's doing right. their hour yes. and if you're not listening to straighty lab hello um wait what's the what's your um elevator pitch of the premise of the show straight culture straighter lab yeah it's each it's a podcast about straight culture it's hosted by me and sam taggart who was a past guest on this podcast and each episode is about a different element of straight culture with a guest that we analyze so actually the one i'm editing now which will be out by the time this comes out is on preppy clothes straight culture with hannah pilkis that's um, so needed which i do think is a fascinating element of straight culture that has been like appropriated and reappropriated within queer and straight communities for decades every gay guy's wearing boat shoes now i've i've sort of sensed that boat shoes are coming back for every gay guy's wearing sparries Sperry's are coming back. Yeah, they're wearing like baggy jeans, tight little crop tops on top, and then they're wearing Sperry's as well. Well, baggy baggy pants and tight crop top has now been in for like three Forever. summers. Forever, yeah. Like, thank I, God. What I used to call the limited two look mm. for gay guys. Um, but, you know, God bless. Seems like we have a lot to look forward to. We're looking forward to the rest of season six of Girls. Thank you guys all so, you much so much for watching. We'll see you next week when we cover episode two.